Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2020 Nissan Kicks, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Kurt trailer hitch receiver. So it seems to me many of our Kicks customers that are interested in a hitch are primarily focused on two things. How it's going to look on the back of your Nissan and is it going to work out well for folding accessories, bike racks especially. Well, to be honest with you, I'm pretty impressed on how this looks on the back of our Nissan. It's going to be completely hidden for the most part. The only thing you're really going to be able to see is a receiver tube opening. And it's going to sit a little bit further back so it blends in. I really do like the fact that it has a reinforced collar. To me, it just gives it a more complete and finished look. As far as it working out with those folding accessories, I think it's going to do pretty good. Since it does sit a little bit further back, we're not going to have a ton of clearance, but I think we're in that safe zone to where a lot of the accessories available are going to have no issues being folded up without having to worry about making contact with the back of your bumper. So this is a class one hitch. So it's going to have the inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter receiver tube opening. And it's also going to have the half inch size pinhole. So keep in mind, a pin and clip does not come included, but if you need one, you can pick it up here at eTrailer. It's gonna have loop style safety chain openings, which give us enough room around them. However, since they do set just below our pin and clip, you may have a little bit of interference if you use a very large hook, but as long as it's reasonable, I really don't see it giving you any issues. As far as the hitch's weight capacities go, it's gonna have a 200 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating. So that's gonna be the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch. So that'll work out well for those one to three bike racks, for example. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, it's going to be 2,000 pounds. So that's going to be the amount of weight that's pulling on the hitch. So that's the weight of your trailer plus anything that you might have on it. Now I do always like to recommend, never a bad idea, to check with your Nissan's owner's manual to make sure your kicks can pull that much weight safely. Now I'm going to give you a couple of measurements and you're going to use these to help figure out which hitch mounted accessories to get. From the ground to the top and side edge of the receiver tube opening, it's going to be about 12 and a half inches. So if you do plan on doing some light duty towing, chances are really good you're going to need to get a ball mount with a rise. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, that's going to be about six inches. And you're gonna use that measurement to help figure out that if any folding accessories you might have can be stored in that upright position without contacting the bumper. So at the end of the day, the hitch is gonna get the job done and in my opinion, look the best too. Now, as far as the installation goes, it's really not too bad. It's a little time consuming, but for the most part, everything's relatively easy to get to. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. To begin our install, we're gonna be underneath the back of our kick, and we're gonna to need to lower our exhaust. So what I like to do is take a strap and just run it from side to side. That way the exhaust will have a little bit of support and we can kind of control how fast and how far we let it down. So to get our exhaust lowered, we're gonna have two rubber isolator hangers. One will be right here at the back, kind of by our tailpipe. And what you wanna do is spray them down with some soapy water or some penetrating oil. That'll make it a little easier. Get a pry bar and we're just gonna work one side off of the metal hanger there. And if we kind of follow our way towards the front, we're going to have one more hanger. Again, spray it down and pry it off. We'll lower our exhaust down and right here should give us enough room to work. Now we can get our heat shield lowered and out of the way for now. And to do that, we're going to have four speed nuts on each corner. And so I'll use a 15, 16 socket to take those off. Once we have them removed, we can pull the heat shield down and just set it off to the side for now. Now on the driver's side, we need to lower our carbon canister down to give us some room to work. We're gonna have one bolt right here that we need to take out. So I'll grab a 12 millimeter socket. We'll pull that out. And then this will kind of just hang down for now. It's not gonna hurt anything and it's gonna give us the 
right amount of room that we need to work. On the driver's side, we're gonna have this little rubber plug that we need to take out as well. So we can just grab a flathead screwdriver, kind of pry underneath it and pop it down. Now I'd like to go over our attachment points that we're gonna to use to secure our hitch. There's gonna be two on each side of our kick and they're gonna be set up the exact same way. So one of them will be this hole here and this hole here. Now what we need to do on each side of our frame rail, this forward most attachment point, we do need to enlarge it just a little bit. That way we have a large enough opening to where we can get our hardware inside of the frame rail. So I'm going to use a grinder bit like this to enlarge it. You can also use a Dremel tool or even a hand file. So once we have this open enough, we can make sure our hardware fits inside. So once you think you got your hole close to being large enough, what you wanna do is grab the spacer block from your kit. Make sure that can easily be pushed inside. You don't actually wanna put it all the way in just yet. You just wanna make sure it can fit inside of there. And you also wanna grab your bolt and make sure the head of it can be pushed inside as well. But since we verified our hardware will indeed fit, what I'm gonna do is just grab some spray paint and just kind of shoot it on that bare metal to help protect it from any rust or corrosion. Now while that's drying, I'm gonna do the same thing over on the other side. Now we can get our hardware inside of the frame rail. And we're gonna have two attachment points on each side. And each side of our kick is gonna be set up the same way and use that same hardware. One attachment point will be right here and the other one will be right here. So what we're gonna do is start with this one first. We're gonna take our pole wire and what I like to do is line up the coiled end with this larger hole here, kind of put a bend in it. We're gonna take the coiled end, get it towards that hole and we want it to drop out through there. So sometimes you may have to kind of reach up there and assist it a little bit. Well, once we have it pulled through, we're gonna take our spacer block, put that over the pull wire and our carriage bolt. That'll thread on. And we can feed that hardware up one at a time. Pull on the other end of the wire and get our bolt to drop down through like that. Now for our other attachment point, it's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna take our pull wire, our spacer block will go on top of it. We're gonna thread our bolt onto it. Push the bolt up first. Then the spacer block, I'll wiggle it around and get our hardware to drop down through like so. Now we can grab our heat shield and trim it out according to the diagram and the instructions. I went ahead and marked that out here and I'm gonna use a pair of 10 snips to get that done. Now that we have our heat shield trimmed up, we can reinstall it the opposite way that we removed it. We'll get it lined up. And what I like to do is just get each one of these speed nuts kind of started. That way the heat shield will support itself. And then we can come back and just snug these down. They don't take a lot of pressure or torque. So keep that in mind. Now with the extra set of hands, we can put our hitch into position. We're gonna to wanna to drop the pull wires through the corresponding holes in the hitch. 
And once you have them both through, you can start to raise the hitch up. We'll hold it flat against the frame. And then you can remove one of the pull wires. You're gonna take one of the flange nuts that's included with the kit. And you wanna get at least one started on each side, hand tight. That way the hitch will support itself while we work on the rest of them. Now that we have all of our hardware in place and hand tight, we can go ahead and snug it all down. Now we can grab our torque wrench and tighten all the hardware down to the amount specified and in the instructions. We can grab our canister and raise that back into position the opposite way that we lowered it. We can move back over to our exhaust. We want to respray down the hangers and just hold it up into position and resecure it. We can go ahead and remove our strap. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Kurt trailer hitch receiver on our 2020 Nissan Kicks.